We're going to start now with our first letter for today. You guys ready? Yay. <laughs> I love the hearts. Thank you. This is... Anybody know what this letter is already? This is... Hey, that's right. Not chet, it's hey. Yes, hey, hey, hey. Now, the letter hey makes the same sound as the letter H in English. And when I look at the letter hey, you're not going to mix it up anymore because now we've got a way to remember it. Actually, who is it that said chet? Today we're learning hey and chet, and you will see the difference between the two and a great easy way of remembering it. So here we're going to look at the letter hey with a picture together with it. So in blue, you see the letter hey. That's right, chet is closed up, and this is how you're going to be able to remember from now on. No, we're not still on banana. We're, we're already at hey. We're actually not doing the alphabet completely in order. I'm skipping some letters here and there, but by the end we will get all the letters. But I feel this is an easier way to learn it. Hey looks like a house with a hole in it for the smoke. You see how it looks like a little house? But it's got this hole for the smoke. Put a little fire in there. Little smoke thinks. I should be an artist, right? <laughs> okay, here we go. Letter hey makes a huh sound. Looks like a house with a hole. Okay? Now, yeah, smoking house. Um, the next letter we're going to learn. Hey equals house. Yes, Darnell, you're awesome. Um, the next letter we're going to learn is the letter that is often confused with hey. Looks a whole lot like hey, right? Looks very similar. Now, let's take the picture of the hay. This is the hay. And then we're going to take the picture of the next letter. And this is actually a chet. I'm teaching you chet today. And chet is a hard sound for most non Hebrew speakers to make. Chet, that's right. So when we're trying to make the chet, when we're trying to write chet in English, we often write a ch. But the ch is not pronounced like ch, it's pronounced ch. Um, like Bach, when you try to say the composer's name Bach, it's a similar sound. You can practice by saying Bach if you're familiar with that. Um, yeah, you don't have to be like, really dramatic about it. <laughs> Thanks for sharing on Twitter. You don't have to be like totally like into it, but you can be more subtle. <sighs> it's okay too. Um, okay, so now how are, we, how are we gonna remember what the difference between hey and chet is? Hey, let's go back to hey for a second. Thanks for inviting followers. I'm not sure about Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. So I don't know if it's like the J sound in Spanish. Cool. Okay, so here's the hay, and we see it's like a house with a hole. And the chet looks like a house too, but there's no hole, so all the smoke gets stuck inside. And what happens when you don't let the smoke out? Don't be smoking in that house. It's terrible. You're choking, right? You can't breathe. And your whole throat is closed up and you're just <laughs> choking. Yeah, that's how we do J in Spanish. Is it baja? Like really baja? Yeah, like clearing your throat. So yeah, you're choking. You're choking on that smoke. So if you're going to lift your tongue, let's say you're breathing. You're making an H sound. You're breathing the H. You try to close your mouth a little bit using the back of your tongue. You just lift up the back of your tongue in your throat till it reaches the roof of the back of your mouth. So you're making the H sound, and as you're making that sound, you're lifting up your tongue, until you're like, it still sounds like you're choking. And that's the chet sound, the lovely chet sound. Um, it's an important sound in Hebrew. What are we gonna try to say three times fast? At 
one, two, three, two, five, nine. Chet? Choke? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, so we've got our he and we've got our chet. And you can practice that chet sound. Yeah, it's like kind of like purring also. So if you're a, if you're a cat person, then you can practice your ch with your cat and like see if your cat responds. If your cat every time I say chet, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you practice more, you won't feel like you're like preparing to spit. You'll just realize it can be more delicate. I'm just I am also ex like I don't know. I'm not exaggerating it, but I'm like I don't know being more dramatic about it a little bit so you guys can understand um, the sound through the periscope screen and, you know. Okay, we're going to show Chet again. We're going to show Hey again and Chet again. This is Hey. This is Chet. They're very similar letters, but Hey has a hole for the smoke to come out. Everything can breathe, great. And chet, it's all getting stuck in there and it's making horrible choking noises. <laughs> okay, we're gonna look at the little fun little mnemonic pictures. This is hay with a nice little fire in a house and thanks for all the hearts, the hearts. Hay is for heart, okay? Hay is for heart. Hay is, yeah, it just H, like house, heart. Ha. And back to the chet. And the chet, all the smoke is stuck inside. No fun. We're all choking on the smoke. Thanks. You like these, huh? Yes. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Okay, now we've got our chet, and we've got our hay, and you know what comes next, right? Okay, have a good day at work. You're off to work, and you'll watch the replay on the classes. Awesome. And then we'll see you Thursday, after you watch the replays. Okay, now we're going to take those fun new letters and we are going to combine them with the letters that we were, what we learned last week. Hey, in San Francisco, I was there too. I had friends who lived there. It's a really fun place to visit. But people are like live really crowded there, so it was kind of kind of strange, but but fun. Okay, who's ready for a word? It's going to combine a letter that we learned last week, the letter that we're learning this week. Yeah? You guys are ready? Sababa? Okay. I'm ready too. Who can tell me what it is? Who got it? Who got it? H. Bustamante. Awesome. Michael Live, you guys are awesome. Darnell in Hebrew, but can you read it in English? I bet. I bet you could. Chag, 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 chag. Yes! And someone even knows. Yes. Chag. Okay, Darnell got in English too, except his little, except his like, what's it called? The typo fixer got in the way. But yeah, you got it in English. Awesome. I knew it. Autocorrect. But you got it. I see you got it. I got it. Okay. So when we're reading Chag, let's just go over it for those who didn't get it. We've got the Chet that we just learned. We've got our uh sound. And we've got our Gimel. We remember from last week. So the Gimel is the guy going to play golf. See his golf stick, golf club. So we're reading ch, a, g, chag. That's right. We've got our chet, our patach, and our gimel. Chag. Chag. 
Yeah, the guy's on his way to play golf, right? Remember that? And Chag in Hebrew means holiday. Chag. Now, Chag is a, it's a modern word. And it's also a biblical word. Yay. Gimel equals golf. Awesome. Hey is for holiday, but Chet is for Chag. Right. And Chag is holiday, so wow, we're going to get it. <laughs> Don't confuse us. Okay, so the quote we have from the Bible in Hebrew, it's in Exodus 12, 14. That's Shemot for the Hebrew Bible people. And it says, V'chagotem oto chag Hashem, And you shall celebrate it as a holiday to Hashem, to God. Um, chag in modern day Israel is used as any holiday. Any holiday that you're going to have off from school or work is a Chag. Um, but, the, but the classic, um, let me go back to it, Exodus 12, 14. Got it? Beyond the walls? Okay, I'm going to show you the word again. Yes, that's right. Exodus 12, 14. Thank you, Torgan Aaron. Here we go. We've got Chag again. Now, great. We've got something even better. We've never done it before. Yes, Chag is a festival. A holiday. That's right. And now we are going to do something that we have never done before. We are now going to read not a two-letter word, but a three-letter word. And it works exactly the same like a two-letter word, and it works exactly the same like a ten-letter word. You take it letter by letter. Yes, three letters. Three! Who can tell me what this one says? Hey there. It's Hebrew. We're learning to read Hebrew in six weeks. If you want to join in, you can join in anytime. But if you want to catch up, you can go to learnhebrew.tv and you can catch the first two classes. We're on class three and we're learning Hebrew by January 6th. So it will be great to join in. No, it's not too much for six weeks. Right guys? Look at them. They all know what this says. This is amazing. That's right. Ha Chag. You want to learn in two weeks? So you can probably squish all the classes into two weeks if you wait till <clears throat> the week, two weeks before January 6th. I mean January 1st. Okay, here we're going to go through it now. We've got the hay. Makes it sound like an H. Ha, ha, g. Consonant and vowel. Consonant and vowel. If it froze, just uh, log off and log back on again. Okay? Ha, chag. Unfroze, yay! Just in time for ha, chag. Now, in Hebrew, the letter He at the beginning of any word means the. Ha chag means the chag. Um, ha periscope means the periscope. Ha at the beginning of any word is as if you were saying the at the beginning of. of. If you want to say the party, you'd say ha party. Um, and you just attach a little hey. That's right, it means the holiday. You got it, Darnell. Awesome. Yes, ha equals the, and you just attach it on the beginning of a word, and you've got the, whatever the word is. Ha chag means the holiday. That's right, ha chag, the holiday. So, um, for those of you who are catching up, they can go to learnhebrew.tv. And you can look on there and see all the fun little um, show notes from the other classes and, and um, 
and see the other classes and catch up on the few letters that we that you missed. That's right. I want to invite you next Chag. Ha Chag. That's right. There's no space between Ha and the word. It becomes one word. So the holiday is Ha Chag. All together. Ha Dag. That's right. Who's on it? La Gosivu. Gochevu. However you say it, I am so proud of you. That's right. Ha Dag. Ha means, unless, unless the letter He is part of the word itself, an extra hey at the beginning of the word is always the. Thanks, you guys are the best. I love it. It's so nice. You make it so fun. Hagad, that's right. But like the the guy named God, I guess, right? You're gonna pass. You're gonna for sure pass. You're for sure gonna pass. It's just six weeks, and you already get it. Okay, somebody said this already, but I have this prepared, so I'm going to show it. What do we got? This is a test. Hadag, yay! Everybody got that? Hadag, awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Yay, yay, yay. I'm so proud of you guys. This is so cool. Does anybody remember what Dag means? Thank you. You guys are so, you guys are the best students ever. That's right. It means fish. Dag means fish. So Hadag means who got it? Michael Live and Buzzy Ann. And your profit one. If you missed out, Vayalofe. And Darnell got it. If you missed out, you can just go and you can catch up. So easy. Go to learnhebrew.tv and catch up. We only did two classes so far, and this is the third. You can do it. Hot dog, the fish. <laughs> it does look like hangman. That's awesome. No, we're not playing hangman, but it's like it's more fun than hangman. We're learning how to read Hebrew in six weeks. I want to eat hot dog. You want to eat the fish? Great. So come to Israel and you can say, "Efo hot dog." I just want to eat the fish. Um, we're learning to read Hebrew in six weeks, and this is the third class. Um, we're doing two classes a week. We're going to be reading Hebrew in six weeks by January 1st. If you missed it until now, you can go to learnhebrew.tv and you can catch up. This is live. What dog is an Arabic word also? Me? All these books behind me? Nah. My husband for sure has. He likes to blow the dust off them before he reads them, but he's gotten to them all. But yes, stay focused. All right, we are going to go back and do a little review now. Okay, I do want to address what Ish Busamante is saying. That a lot, yes, that's right, it's dog. Yay. Dog. You guys, are, you just remembered it. You practiced it, for sure. Okay, so listen. When you get a little bit more advanced, a different, it's a different vowel, that's right. Did I write the wrong vowel on the other one? I did. I'm going to fix it right now. Um, it's a different vowel that makes exactly the same sound. Um, and when you get a bit, little bit more advanced in Hebrew, you'll find that the texts that you're looking at don't even have vowels. Um, you just kind of guess because it's, uh, it's pretty easy to figure out. That's right. Just like someone's writing Chag now with no vowels and your, and your Hebrew keyboard is not going to have vowels on it. You now, if you ever see a dalid and a gimel next to each other, you just know it's dog. It's not going to be dig or dog or 
or anything else. It's just Doug. Your five-year-old is learning with you, and I bet your five-year-old is getting it. He's writing it too. That's awesome. That's amazing. It's okay. So look, yeah, my I have a six-year-old who's um who's reading without vowels already. So you'll read the vowels in the beginning, and you'll get like kind of a an ear for how the language sounds, and then you just don't need them anymore. They kind of uh, I don't know. There was this funny um. Even in English, there was this funny, uh, what do you want to call it, like meme going around on Facebook that was showing how, do you guys see it? It was showing how in English, showing how in English, if you mix up the letters, but you just keep the same first and last letter, people know what the word is supposed to be. Um, I mean, you just kind of look at the word and you get, you get a feel for it, but Hebrew is, is much 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 easier than English don't you just try to think of all the crazy stuff in English that you have to if you were re reading learning to read English for the first time like my kids in my kids in Israel they first they learn how to read Hebrew and when they're in third or fourth grade they start to learn English in school and they have to learn all this craziness in English and it's it's so complicated Hebrew is just a really simple language okay we're gonna go over something we did last last week again because we're already on it. Okay, I see most of you got it, but I'm going to remind everybody that Hebrew goes right to left. Most of you got it, though. God. That's right. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that the people that didn't get it, it's probably because your uh, your autocorrect jumped in there, and wrote in had or stuff like that. But it's God, God, right? Awesome. Now here's one from last week that we didn't use this letter at all yet. This class, I'm just gonna put it out there. No, it's not possible. That's right. You guys all got it. You're amazing. Okay, so we're going to wrap it up in a minute, but if there's anybody on here who wants to catch the classes that they missed, wait, somebody's asking how is that bad? Let's go through it again. How is it bad? Are you making jokes about my bad and my bad? Okay, we've got the bet. A, D, bad. Yes, there is a circle in the middle. It is part of this letter. But in the keyboard, in the Hebrew keyboard, those that already downloaded the Hebrew keyboard, the bet on the keyboard doesn't have the dot in the middle. But we're going to get to that probably next class. It's a little bit complicated. <laughs> yeah, don't cheat from each other. Okay, we are going to go back to the letters that we learned today. Let me find them. What's this guy? It's a hey. Awesome. It's the Hebrew letter hey. And we're remembering it by this fun little mnemonic. The house with the hole in it for the smoke. You did know it. You did know it. That's incredible. Yes, you're a total genius, because next A is the tough one. Wait, look at this guy first. Chet. That fun, terrible noise. Chet is the house with no holes, so we're all getting all choked up in there. No smoking in the house. <laughs> you might just be the best. Okay, so you guys are going to practice the chet noise. You can practice by listening to Bach and telling everyone how you've been listening to Bach. Are there any other words in English that have that sound? I was trying to think of them, and I don't think so. I mean, there's chutzpah that people use, but you can practice saying chutzpah and Bach. Sound all sophisticated. 
Machfall. Is that how you pronounce Machfall? I didn't even know. Yeah, you gotta practice. You'll practice and you'll get it and it'll be great. And if you get, if you feel like it's becoming like hard for you, just go back and watch it again. It's pretty short. And you got it. You guys are really good. All right. So whoever wants to share, go ahead and share. Whoever, what's next? You're going to have to wait till Thursday. That's all we're doing for tonight. So thanks everybody for joining. Yes, it's break time. Whatever time it is in the morning for you, mostly most of you guys, it's like what six in the morning. You're on your you're off on your way to work, or I think some people it's like noon, right? I am thirty seven. Thanks for coming. Oh, Thursday is Thanksgiving. Okay.